Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 15th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see our next system taking shape off the coastline here. you got British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, Hawaiian Islands down here, and this cold air aloft here is going to move over the region as well. It's going to bring a thunderstorm chance, some gusty winds with it also, and back off across some of the Aleutian Islands here. You can see the remnants of Typhoon Bolivin out there, and that's going to bring an atmospheric river probably towards British Columbia. Here. We'll look at those details as we go. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as always. Some interesting troughing here showing up towards the end of October as well. Take a look at SeaTac yesterday, 62 degrees. That's one degree above average, 400 of an inch of rain. And we're going to add to that total here as we go through the day tomorrow with a decent frontal system, some blustery winds rolling in with that as well. And you can see that here, Idaho, Panhandle, Montana, calling attention to that here. This is for Tuesday, October 17th, with that frontal system moving across the area. High wind watch across some portions of of Montana out there. This would include Cut Bank. So heads up for that. I guess up to 70 miles per hour possible here if you're headed off to the east. Does not include Great Falls at this time. Here's precipitation totals here. Seattle, Washington. And it, what we're looking at is the Olympic Mountains right here in the coastal areas. You can see some of the Olympics getting up over two inches. Seattle, somewhere between a half an inch and an inch. Same thing for Olympia and Tacoma there. Nice graphic from the National Weather Service Seattle. Sneaker ways possible. Always a good idea to kind of maintain your awareness there when you're around the coastline all the way up from British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, down through California. And as you can see, National Weather Service Portland calling attention to that sneaker wave potential here today. And I mentioned this one already. Looks like it duplicated that. Look at Seattle, Tacoma. Got a hydraulic outlook here for some of the south slopes of the Olympic Mountains. And you've got some gale warnings and some gale watches out there as well. Some blustery conditions incoming here tomorrow with this front. And if you want to save 10% off a nice portable home weather station, makes it so much more fun to watch these systems roll in when you've got a weather station attached to your place of residence. Uh, click on that link down below to save 10%. Uh, looking at 80 meter wind speed here. So well, what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll through the day today. You can see not too bad. A little bit of a shot of wind there from maybe Vancouver Island as we go through this afternoon and evening. But then you'll see the front system approach here. And you can see it impacting Vancouver Island. Some of the coastal areas getting some gusts maybe around 40 miles per hour. You can see the wind pick up across places north of Port Townsend here as well. Maybe towards the Whidbey Island area, San Juan's as we go through the morning Monday here. And you can kind of see that wind pick up across some of the waters of the North Puget Sound up through the Strait of Georgia. Coastal areas getting a decent little shot of wind here. No major windstorm, however. And then you'll see the frontal system pass. The wind direction changes here. We bring some gusty winds down the east slopes of the Cascades also. Thunderstorm chance is going to come with this colder air that arrives uh, as well. We'll look at that in a bit of detail here in a moment. Now, taking a look here at the composite reflectivity, here's the NAM 3KM. As we go through the day today, you can kind of see this warm frontal feature here. A cold front still well off the coastline here. It's going to be impacting us on Monday. But if we scroll ahead on in through late Sunday night into Monday morning, you can clearly see the frontal system arriving here for Oregon, Washington, Vancouver Island, pushing through the region. Then we've got some unstable air and some showers behind that. And that's what's going to be bringing our thunderstorm potential. Right now, it exists for southwest BC, western Washington, and northwest Oregon. We'll take a look at that here in a minute as well. Well, on this slide, you can see that does include Portland and Seattle, would include Vancouver, British Columbia also. Now, looking at the European lightning flash density potential here. So if I put this into motion, we're going to go all the way to Monday afternoon. And you can see some of that coming late Monday morning and some of that activity spreading up over the region here as we go through the day Monday. And I'll show you why that's going to occur. Check it out. Cross Whidbey Island there. Maybe Skagawakum County. You can't rule out a thunderstorm as we go on into the evening hours there as well. Now, looking out across the Gulf of Alaska, you can see that colder air. We're looking at 700 millibars, which is about 10,000 feet. And you can see Washington, um, Oregon, and British Columbia here. Now, watch this. You can't miss this bowling ball headed for us here. And that's what's going to bring that thunderstorm threat as we go through the day Monday. You can see that colder air aloft, which helps to steepen our lapse rate and uh, creates instability and could bring that thunderstorm threat for us. This is looking at the NAM 3 cam, same thing here, 700 millibars, except we got BC, Washington, Oregon here. And we put that into motion. And here we go through the day Sunday. And then you can see the uh, the colder air aloft start to arrive as we go through the day Monday. Can't miss it there. Moving across some of Northwest Oregon, British Columbia, and Washington. Now, looking at precipitable water, so this is that frontal system coming in here. We've got some atmospheric river action going on here. But again, at this time of year, things are mostly beneficial at this point. As you know, we're dealing with drought conditions here across much of the Pacific Northwest. 
So any flooding concern is going to be, you know, heavily outweighed in the, our need for precipitation. And then we deal with um, ex-tropical typhoon out here, Bolivan. And you can see it's associated atmospheric river pointing at British Columbia and Vancouver Island. A lot of precipitation showing up for some of British Columbia and Vancouver Island, but not a lot of this right now in the models showing that getting into western Washington or for Portland, for example. And you can kind of see that hanging out and bouncing around just to the north of western Washington here. So this can also bring some interesting weather here as well. When we get this strong flow, moist, you can get some really cool lenticular cloud formation off the Cascades of Washington here on the south side of this precipitation here where clouds are obscuring the mountaintops. So that might be kind of interesting there. Just a heads up for photographers. And if we scroll out further enough, you can see some interesting troughing here developing across Pacific Northwest. But that's kind of out in fantasy land. We'll take a look at that here in a moment in the 500 millibar chart. Uh, looking at the coastal areas, you can see the atmospheric river potential here. But again, at this time of year, it's mostly beneficial. We're not going to complain about anything too much here. Maybe a little bit of flooding across some of the south portion of the Olympic Mountains in Washington State, but not too big of a deal. Now, looking at the GFS as of last night, so check this out. This is 18,000 feet, and you can see Washington, Oregon here. This is our frontal system swinging through the day Monday, that colder air aloft moving. Then we kind of build this ridge, and that's uh, the, the remnants of tropical typhoon and a bowl event out there and the atmospheric river is going to be pointed here at Vancouver Island but we've got this ridging building here across a lot of the west as well so we're going to kind of right be on the cutoff here of the precipitation I'll show you the precipitation uh, map here in a moment as well another system rolls through here maybe next week and, and then maybe a deeper trough here starting to show up on some of the runs here as well as we go towards the end of October as you can see there but kind of fantasy forecast at this point now looking at the European this is 24 hour running total if we go through the day today into tomorrow you can see that precipitation occurring Seattle somewhere around a half an inch bigger totals for the coastal ranges Olympic Mountains Vancouver Island Southwest BC and then you can see that narrow atmospheric river pointed into British Columbia look at some of these totals just over and over again. These are 24-hour running totals, and some of this showing up over six inches for Vancouver Island, kind of missing western Washington, but heavy amounts up just to the north of western Washington there, and then maybe next week in a system rolls through here, then fantasy land trough out there, our 274 on yesterday afternoon's European run. Now, looking at daily two-meter max temperature as well, we might bump the temperatures up a little bit here as we go this week. There's Monday, system rolls through, and we got some chillier air aloft Tuesday, but we start to bounce back there when Wednesday. Check it out. We might get a return towards some of the 70 degree mark here for some of Western Washington, Willamette Valley, getting up into the mid 70s, maybe Thursday. Another fairly nice day, but there might be some that cloud shield is going to be nearby here. So uh, don't hold me to this one just yet. We'll watch this over the next couple days and try to pin down these temperatures here. Uh, the cloud shield may be nearby here and it could easily ruin uh, and bring down the temperatures on a fairly warm day otherwise. But then you can see towards next weekend, maybe another system rolling through here and bringing the temperatures down again. Now looking for this frontal system moving through, you can see this is nothing too exceptional. I mean, you might get a gust 35, 40 miles per hour for some of the Oregon, Washington coastline and maybe a little bit more for Hoquiam there. But yeah, this frontal system System, not too strong, not a big windstorm here, but you'll notice those blustery conditions as we go through the day Monday. And this is Whidbey Island, though, a little bit better up there. Actually, a couple ensembles have things up towards 50 miles per hour, and the control had a few hours there of 40, 45 mile per hour. Gut. So, you know, a blustery system up there across some of the Puget, North Puget Sound there across western Washington, up towards Vancouver Island as well. And then you can see a fantasy windstorm land out here. You can see some higher gusts up towards 50, but nothing organized at this point just something we'll watch in the future seattle probably gusting uh, actually the control run at 37 so that's not a bad little guess there but uh, for the most part you're looking at 25 to 35 mile per hour range gusts with this frontal system here's tillamook looking about a one inch uh, total here in a 24 hour period as we go on in through monday night a little bit of a break there and then the return of some unsettled weather here as we go towards the end of october similar pattern here for or a similar picture here for hokley and washington as well somewhere around an inch showing up on the latest european here for this monday frontal system seattle a little bit further inland of course you're looking about what seven tenths of an inch here uh, six tenths of an inch on the control and then uh, kind of a uh, uh, interesting uh, picture here with some heavier precipitation coming towards the end of the month as well. Portland, something similar there also. The last control run had six tenths of an inch in a 24-hour period with this Monday frontal system. 
Now, this is looking at yesterday afternoon's European versus the GFS. So you got the European on the left, the GFS on the right. This is yesterday afternoon's run. Okay, pretty good model agreement in the short term with the system moving through on Monday. Then we build that ridge here, but the atmospheric river is going to be nearby, probably up into British Columbia at this point. But the ridge is building across the west. So it's going to be a fine line here on where this precipitation band sets up. But right now, looks like it's favoring Vancouver Island. Then next week, you can see some semblance of a system rolling through the Pacific Northwest here and then you can see the gfs going to open up this trough here across some of the intermountain west in southern california there and the european kind of showing a, a chillier upper level low dropping right down across pacific northwest so that would be kind of interesting there but purely a fantasy forecast at this point and then once we go out far enough of course things get just all kinds of chaotic as you can see a ridge versus some troughing here and not much agreement in the models six to ten day a temperature our precipitation outlook here you can see some blow average here across the southwest maybe some of the pacific northwest above average through this time period coming up six to ten day you can see the signs of that ridge building here along a lot of the west coast and this is the drought monitor. If we look here, you can still see we have some extreme drought still across western Oregon and Washington. And hopefully we can, you know, put a dent in this here with uh, tomorrow's system rolling through here. So, yeah, take a look at that. And you can actually click in and look a little bit closer here. And you can see that the Seattle Metro has been, um, we've, we've improved some here. Abnormally dry there. Kitsap Peninsula there also. But you can see if you go up in the foothills across some of the Cascades and the Cascades themselves, you can see there's still some extreme and severe drought out there. But surprisingly enough, some of the Columbia Basin there and maybe what Ellensburg out there as well, actually not in drought currently. Anyway, yeah, there's that ex-tropical typhoon Ebola event out there south of the Aleutian Islands. There goes our frontal system Monday. The cold air behind it brings some thunderstorms in here. And we'll always watch the extended forecast over the next few days as well. Well, you know, it's October. We can get some interesting troughing here rolling across the area as well. But we might also get a nice couple days coming up this week. Again, depending on where this atmospheric river associated with a uh, tropical or typhoon Bolivin out there, where is that going to set up exactly? Right now it looks like Vancouver Island. But anyway, we'll watch this over the next couple days closely. I'll probably be doing another weather station giveaway here in the next uh, week or so here, depending on how the California channel does here over the next few days. So if you can, get over there and click like and subscribe and watch those videos. Help that channel get going if you would for me. But anyway, we will do this again tomorrow in tomorrow's briefing, and I will talk to you guys then.